Wow, isn't this stunning? Hard to find words to put to these pictures. Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Droxford in Hampshire. It's about nine miles north of Fareham and 16 miles south of Alton. The A32 goes through the middle of it. And today we're going to be doing a circular route of around about three miles with a couple of little mini detours. We're going to see two pubs, two churches, and a disused railway track which has got some very interesting history attached to it and of course some wonderful countryside. So do join us. Well I parked my car at the uh, free car park that's very close to the church. Speaking of the church let's have a quick look <laughs> which is just behind me here on uh, my left in the glorious sunshine and this is St Mary's and All Saints Originally there was a Saxon church here founded by St Wilfred, recorded in the Doomsday Book. The Norman nave and chancel was built in the mid 12th century. North Isle and North Chapel built in the 12th century or early 13th century. And the South Isle and Chapel was built in the 14th century. There was a major restoration in the early 1900s. The tower is in three stages there. And you see there's a date of 1599 on a plaque I can just about make out on the side. And uh, I see the doors open so uh, have a quick look inside. And just actually on the side, I don't know if you can see, it's, it's quite dark. There's a little mass dial and the hole which the stick would have been put in has been um, covered over. Of course the porch wouldn't have been here when it was originally done. I've got a little spotlight. Can you see it? Well, we'll have a little peep inside the church. Now I couldn't find the lights I'm afraid so it might be a bit dark in here. I have got a little spotlight with me. I'm just making our way to the uh, altar. A lovely stained glass window there. I believe this eastern side of the church was damaged by a stray bomb during the war, so it might have been recently built. And then the thing that I want to show you is just round here. I think it's round here. Ah, yep, there we go. Now, uh, this. Um, stone figure is the mother of John Droxford or John de Drockensford as he was originally known. He was a 14th century bishop but when the statutes of saints were being destroyed in the Civil War uh, the lady here was secretly removed from her altar tomb and buried in a moat nearby. And basically she was forgotten about for over 200 years before being found in the 1800s and brought back to the, the church here. Now if you look very carefully, I don't know if that's going to make out, I'll try and get a picture on screen. It looks like she's clasping a purse or a pendant hanging by a ribbon around her neck, but uh, in fact it's the jewel of her husband's heart. Well before we head out into the countryside as it were, we'll have a little wander through the, the village itself. It's not a particularly big village. There's the manor house which is um, behind this wall here. I'll try and get a photograph. It's 16th century. And then just panning around we've got the rather sweet little Droxford village hall. Now this many years ago was the old um, school. I did come, a photo, come across an old photograph of uh, when it was a school. Well the village has got uh, two pubs, this one here the Baker's Arms which dates from the 1890s although originally it was a house in the 18th century 
And there is another pub in the south of the village called the White Horse. And that dates from the 15th century. It was a lovely little village. We just passed by one of those old telephone boxes converted to a, a book swap place. But we can't stop here. We're going to cross over the A32 and go down this tiny little path by the side of the pub and start making our way out into the countryside. Oh wow, isn't that pretty? Is that um, Cyclamen? I think so. Uh oh, blackberries have to keep Logan out of the way. <laughs> Oh, our first sighting of the River Meon today in full flow. Now we're down by a, a mill. There were originally two mills in Droxford and this is the only one that still remains although it's now a, a private house. And uh, There is a date of 1774 on its beams and I think it closed as a mill in 1920 but uh, have a quick wander over this little bridge and there we go it certainly is in uh, full flow I say I'm filming mm, beginning of September so autumn is on its way We've now completed our little mini circle from the church around the village to the mill and now we're going to head east uh, and crossing over the River Meon and just passing down this lovely avenue of trees that's going to take us out to the river. You see there's a plaque up on there it looks like these trees were planted in oh, 1962. Crikey that means they're, they're as old as me. Wow, isn't this stunning? Hard to find words to put to these pictures. What a place to have a picnic. Uh, the River Meon is a, it's a chalk stream, 21 miles long. The source is uh, about one mile south of East Meon and it flows to the Solent at a small harbour at uh, Hill Head near Stubbington and Meon derives well the name is, a, is Celtic for swift one in fact the whole valley here was settled in the fifth and sixth centuries by the Mianwara tribe people of the Meon they were Saxons and Jutes from Denmark and the earliest recording of the name Drockens Forda was in a charter dated 1826 and Drocken is Old English for dry place. Oh, it is so crystal clear as a lot of these chalk streams are. Struggling to see any fish though. Good boy. What's that? Is that good fun? Any fish in there? <laughs> Come on then. Come on. <laughs> Good boy. Well, we had a bit of fun in the river there. Now, very shortly, we're going to be heading south and following the Wayfarer's Walk, which is a, a 71 mile walking trail. But before we do, just going to carry on heading east for a little bit to have a look at an old disused railway. There's something I wanted to show you there. Well, I made my way onto a bridge that uh, crosses the old Meon Valley railway line that's now disused. 
Let me show you the track that's behind me here. And uh, I say the railway line runs for about 22 miles between Alton and Fareham, basically following the River Meon. And the railway station at Droxford, which is about 200 yards down the track there, was built in the early 1900s. The line was one of the last railways to be built to main line standards in the UK. Passenger services were withdrawn in 1955 and the line closed in 1968. It's now part of the Meon Valley Trail, which is a, an 11 mile walking trail from West Meon in the north to Wickham in the south. But uh, we're going to pop down there because there's something I want to show you. Well, I've made my way down onto the track. I've just discovered there's a, a less steep way to get down, so I'll know that going back up. But the reason we're here, I want to show you this little railway cutting that's uh, alongside the main track. And it was here on the 2nd of June 1944 that uh, Winston Churchill met up with uh, some of the Allied leaders uh, to discuss the D-Day preparations. Now just four days before D-Day, two special coaches pulled into this very siding and on board were Winston Churchill, General Smuts, the South African Prime Minister and members of the War Cabinet. And then I think it was the 4th of June, General de Gaulle and Mackenzie King, the Canadian Prime Minister, they arrived to meet Churchill here in the same carriage. And Droxford Station was chosen uh, as the meeting point because it was close to encampments and uh, US General Eisenhower's headquarters in Southwark. And basically what they'd do is Churchill would get on the, the coaches at the station which is about 200 yards down the track to the uh, north and then pull the, the carriages would get pulled out to this, this cutting and it was well hidden um, in this sort of uh, deep gully and trees overhanging so uh, you know very well camouflaged and quite a safe place to have all these meetings and basically it was Churchill's base here between the 2nd of June and the 4th of June very much a pivotal point in the D-Day preparations indeed at the time of the decision to postpone the invasion for 24 hours to bad weather he may well have uh, been here there is a, a commemorative bench in Droxford Village itself and also there's a commemorative plaque on the uh, side of the building where the uh, railway station was. Speaking of the railway station, what we'll do is we'll have a little wander, I say about two to three hundred yards to the, uh, to the north and see if we can uh, still see what's there. time of the walk when we stop for our blackberries. I'll give you a hand. There we go. That one. I like these. Make the most of them while they're still here. <laughs> Do you want one more? <laughs> Good boy. We've well, now made our way to the location of the building that was once uh, Droxford Railway Station. It's now a private property in all fence in, so you can't actually see it. It is for sale for 1.6 million though, I see. <laughs> but uh, you can still just about make out uh, a little bit of the platform that's not on private land, that's on the, uh, the northern side, um, which is yeah, still in quite, uh, quite good nick. Well that was an interesting little detour. We're now back on our original route on the Wayfarers Walk and we're now going to head south towards the little hamlet of Soberton. So 
this little part of the walk, we're going to have the River Mion on uh, my right. And then if I just pan round, you can see we've got loads of quite uh, beautiful fields to wander through and trees on the left. The old railway line is in the, um, the cutting behind those trees. Well, I'm now as far south as I'm going to go, a little road called Cut's Arch. I'm standing on Cut Bridge, which goes over the River Mion. I'll just show you the view that I'm looking at. So that's the uh, that's where I've just come from, from that field there. And there's the uh, quite enchanting River Mion again. Look at those exquisite red berries from the hawthorn. Now. Um, we will be heading north uh, back to Droxford but before we do I'm going to do another tiny little detour to look at Soberton. Oh, it's absolutely glorious now, the sun is out, so it's perfect temperatures, about 20 degrees or so but there's a nice little breeze as well cooling us down. Now this is what I call, they've got their priorities right around here, not only does the sign point us where we're going and where we've been but even tells us where the nearest pubs are. That little ladybird crawling over the sign, that lovely. Oh, puffing and panting away as we come uphill and head into Soberton. And the building you can see in front of me is Soberton Towers, built in the late 19th century. It was a primary school and then it became a home for Wrens from HMS Mercury at Leydeen, which was a shore base. And I believe it's now Flats, our second pub of the day. The White Lion at Soberton dates from the 17th century. A former coach house and stables. I say it's a, a very small little hamlet. I've just passed a sign confirming that we're still on the Wayfarers' Walk. Well, I've now made my way to Soberton Church, which is just behind me on my left. Turn around so that you can see it in all its glory. St Peter's Church. And there was a, an original church on this site at least in the 11th century, but little remains of that. The present building is late 13th century. Oh wow, what have we got here? Roman coffin found in... Brigden Field Manor Farm 1880. Wow. Okay, continue my little tour of the church. The tower there was rebuilt in 1520 and the church had a major restoration in 1881 but it didn't actually become a, a parish church until the 1890s. Now there are lots of grinning demons and gargoyles on the tower but on the west side, I don't know if I can make it out with a GoPro, I'll see if I can get a better picture with a, a zoom but I've not got my good camera with me today. But there are some, well there are a couple of heads, one of a man, one of a woman, divided by a skull and near one is a key and the other a pail. And it's these curious things which have suggested the the story that the tower might have been built from the savings of a butler and a, and a dairy maid. We're now heading on our homeward leg as it were. So we've come back along Cutch Arch and I'm just by a pretty little cottage called Waterside. There we go and then we're now going to head back along some fields. Up we go Logan, come on, good boy. And so this route, as I say, it's going to take us north. And so this time we're going to have the River Meon very much on our right. And then some open fields with trees on our left. Ooh, someone's having a good roll in the grass there. <laughs> You're going to go over? No, good scratch of the head. Oh, get it over. Yeah, you going to go over? Nearly. <laughs> It's just got that annoying scratch on your chin. Oh, get it? Now we're doing the other side. <laughs> You're a cutie. 
Oh, beautiful. Right. Oh gosh, that's a an impressive looking tree house in the far distance. And a very nice veranda as well. You get a superb view across the, the valley and the river from sitting up there. Imagine having your gin and tonics in the evening. And goodness me, what have we got over here? This looks uh, very exotic. I've no idea what this is. But ever such a delicate uh, flower on top. Very pretty. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a, a thumbs up or a like and do make a comment and please do subscribe. That way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. A big thank you by the way to everybody that has subscribed. We're coming up to nearly 400 subscribers the last time I looked. That was great. But say, so, weather today has been absolutely spot on. Hasn't been our longest walk of the series, but it has been an interesting one nonetheless. So we're going to make our way to the Baker's Arm for some light refreshment. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.